Good morning and welcome to the joint service of uh, Emanuel United Church, Rideau Park United Church, and Kitchissippi United Church on this fourth Sunday of Pentecost, the 28th of June. So good to have you with us this morning. As we meet together, we begin by remembering the Algonquin people on whose traditional land we now gather in gratitude. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land and the water, the plants and the animals through many generations. We bear witness to the ongoing suffering caused by historical injustices and commit to seeking right relations today.
through our uh, broadcast crew and technical, and also Teresa and Nancy, who are offering music today, Sandra for her flowers, and the countless volunteers who continue to uh, make Emmanuel thrive and uh, live out its mission in our community and indeed in the world. Uh, I want to bring to your attention an offer in prayers this morning for the uh, family of Don Bardwell, who was the first minister here at Emmanuel United Church. And if I have my, it's appropriate it's on this Sunday we announce his death, because if I have my history right, I think we actually stole him from Rideau Park. He, uh, <laughs> Don was the minister, I believe, at Rideau Park, and somehow he saw the light and came to Emmanuel in our prayers are with his family on his death. I believe that he was 90 years of age at the time of his death. So, And also, a member of our congregation, Walter Tarantiak. I'm sorry to announce his death this morning. Uh, his obituary will be in the paper on Monday, tomorrow, and his funeral is to be live-streamed on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. And again, our prayers and thoughts are with Walter's family on this day. Uh, in the announcements, just to remind you of the July-August Life and Work Pack, which was emailed, but there are physical copies available. And the summer newsletter deadline is coming up on June the 30th. We have had an absolutely amazing result with our virtual Tulipathon 2020. Our previous record was 37,500 and as anyone can see looking at that thermometer we have completely smashed that record. Donations keep coming in and we are excited to see our final result because we are accepting donations all the way through till June 30th. On behalf of everyone who works for MHI, a huge shout out to all of you who made Tulipathon 2020 a raging success. Everyone who donated, everyone who fundraised, everyone who walked, everyone who found creative ways to get together with their neighbors and complete their solo stroll or household hike while maintaining physical distancing. The many people from neighborhoods throughout Ottawa who posted on social media or emailed us with a photo. And everyone who spread the word in their communities about the Tulipathon, MHI, and the importance of affordable housing in this city. We are entirely grateful and we are thrilled with the result. It is one thing to be able to say that the Tulipathon 2020 went ahead even during a pandemic, but it's another thing altogether to be able to say that we beat every record that we held for our Tulipathon. We are so grateful and humbled by the support that this city has shown us and shown affordable housing. And we thank you and we can't wait to see you again next year in person at Dow's Lake in 2021. both our Christ and our affirming candles. And if you would join me in the welcome this morning. Welcome to the sacred place of belonging where we embrace the sacredness of life and recognize the dignity of each person. Spirit filled with the image of God, the mystery in whom we live and move and have our being. Welcome to all who have no church home, need strength, want to follow Christ, have doubts. Welcome to visitors and old friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, youth, and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, abilities, gender identities, and sexual orientations, to old and young, to believers and questioners, and welcome to questioning believers. This day, 
we are all invited to live into God's love, peace, and justice. Our hymn is from More Voices, number one, Let Us Build a House Together. Please join Teresa and Nancy.
we join together in the call to worship. Come in and rest your weary feet. The door has been opened for us and all who come to worship. There is no health questionnaire, no temperature check. All are welcome in this place. And let us pray. God of love, in Jesus you welcome us to the feast. Your hospitality is open and inclusive. Help us to welcome others as he invites us in, without questions, without qualification, simply as a brother or a sister, ready to serve, ready to share. In Jesus' name we come. Amen. Well, a special welcome to, um, to all the children who might be tuning in this morning. I brought something with me. This is a mat that usually sits in front of a door somewhere. And I don't know if you can read the word that's on it. It's a little dirty because people have been walking over it. But it says the word welcome. These days, we don't have people coming in and out of our houses or our offices or like the way we usually do. So you might not have a welcome mat out there. But there are lots of ways that we can talk about welcoming. Uh, if you have someone come to us, uh, somebody special come to visit you, even if it's on Zoom, you might have some of their special food or you might uh, bring something to that meeting that connects the two of you together. When... Um, when somebody comes to your house for a meal in non-COVID times, you might uh, ask them what they like to eat. Uh, do they have any allergies? Are they allergic to cats or dogs? Those are the kinds of things that we do to make sure that they feel welcome in your house. Well, Jesus had a special perspective on welcoming. In fact, um, instead of just asking them what they like to eat, maybe Jesus would have said, you can plan the menu or um, do you want to bring a friend or two jesus had this idea that welcoming was not just uh, the agenda or the priorities of the person who was hosting but also that the people who were coming in should have an should have have an idea of what they wanted too so it's almost like inviting somebody to come over and letting them rearrange your furniture Jesus wanted us to listen to the people that we invite in, and that's the best welcome of all. So we're going to continue on that theme in our service today. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Elizabeth. And the pointed gospel for... Uh the Sunday of the Christian year is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew from the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 40. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward.
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Friends, let us pray. God of immense grace, bless us in this time as we come to hear your word and to open our doors to those who may come with a message from you that we may hear and live and act. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. A few years ago, when the United Church held its general council at Carleton University, I was the coordinating chaplain, and one afternoon I had to go back to Canada early, and so I was in the Carleton cafeteria. It was pretty much just me at 4 o'clock, along with the staff, and I was getting my tray along the servery, going to have some rice and some chicken, and the guy put the rice on my plate, and I was wearing a badge about here that said chaplain on it, and I think we had yellow t-shirts that were unique, and they had the big word chaplain on it. And I noticed he was looking pretty closely at my badge. And before he went to put the chicken on the plate, he stopped. And he looked at me, and he said, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. And I didn't know what to do. I thought, do I tell him that in the United Church we do a kind of general confession and there's none of this private confession? Or do I just play along and let him think I'm a Catholic priest? I didn't know what to do. So I defaulted and I made it the sign of the cross. And I said what I always say when I miss a shot in, at tennis, a bad shot, Domini et Patria et Spiritu Sancto. And this seemed to work because he smiled and said, thank you, Father, and put the chicken on my plate. Being on the front line and being identified is always opening yourself to the unexpected, to the uncertain. A friend of mine who I play golf with on Monday is a recently retired police officer, and he just told us this Monday that if people find out he's a police officer, he immediately and universally gets a litany of all the traffic tickets that people have ever had, and he never in his career worked in the traffic division. So you have the context here in these short verses in Matthew of Jesus sending the disciples out, and he says to them, if they welcome you, they welcome me. And if they welcome me, they welcome the one who sent me. Because mixed in this story, in this whole chapter, 10th chapter of Matthew, is Jesus' seeming anxiety, worry about his disciples as he sends them out into the world about what kind of reception they're going to get. It's the second time he raises this issue of what it will be like when they go out into the world with the good news. And Jesus, as you can imagine, isn't really certain what's going to happen. So Professor Bill Loader calls the disciples envoys. And envoys were actually very common in the ancient world. <clears throat> if one power wanted to send a message to another power, they would send it via an envoy. Or if you wanted to negotiate a treaty with an enemy power, you might send a message, a letter, through an envoy to that opposing power. But the key in the relationship was whether the receiving group believed that the envoy had not only the authority, but the ability to negotiate on behalf of the sender. That was the key. Did the envoy really represent the sender, or were they just, you know, a spy coming to look at your camp? The disciples as envoys, Jesus wondered how would the people of Israel 
respond to them, welcome them, would they accept that these envoys were indeed representatives of this rural rabbi from Galilee named Jesus? Would they believe him? Interestingly, the word angels, which literally in Hebrew means messengers, has a common root with this word envoy. Would you believe an angel's message? Jesus is saying, if they welcome you as my envoy, then they're welcoming me and they're welcoming the one who sent me. And it's actually very tough work. I was in a local store in the neighborhood here in Ottawa where I live talking to the owner and in came these two fairly well-dressed young gentlemen. So the owner excused himself for a moment and went and talked to them. And they were representatives from the Ottawa Senators and they were trying to sell him a rental of a business lounge. And it didn't go very well. Being on the front line Doing cold calls is some of the hardest work people can do. Often it's a starting position, a baseline in an organization. <clears throat> Except one major hotel chain has realized that their frontline reception workers are the people who make the most impact often on your experience in a hotel. And they've started putting their best people in those positions. And the Vancouver Transit made an interesting decision in human resources recently. They realized that they could pretty much train anyone to drive a bus, but it's more difficult to find people who can get along with other people. So those are the people they've started hiring. Jesus' envoys were literally, if you read back at the beginning of Matthew chapter 10, were literally wellness traveling wellness clinics. The tasks that Jesus gave them were healing the sick, driving out demons, raising the dead, cleaning the lepers, proclaiming good news. So if there was a knock on the door and they flashed their badge and said, we're here for Jesus, the rural rabbi from Galilee, could we speak with you for a moment? You've got to wonder what kind of reception did they get and what kind of reception would they get today? Because we're deeply conscious right now in the midst of this pandemic how difficult and how risky being on the front line really is. Even my barber is wearing a mask and a face shield just to give you a haircut, which I've got. I'm not sure many of us would kind of frame our work in the church or our volunteer activity in the community as being envoys, Jesus' envoys. But especially in the United Church of Canada, at Emmanuel, at Rideau Park, at Kitchissippi, we are among the most time-giving envoys that Jesus has in the world. One congregation I served here in Ottawa ran the food bank, the local food bank, entirely for one day of every week. And that took all kinds of volunteer time and effort and energy and enthusiasm. And they were envoys. Hospital visitors from the United Church of Canada will come and sit with patients, talk with patients, pray with patients in our hospitals. They our envoys. I remember the first refugee family we had in Canada among our local churches and the time and energy and the commitment that so many people in the congregation made to that refugee family, especially during their first year here in Canada. They were envoys. Things that we do like Habitat for Humanity builds global partnerships in San Salvador, which you'll hear about in a few moments. And the list goes on and on and on because we are Jesus' envoys. We are Jesus' envoys. And if you are welcomed, then Jesus is welcomed. And if Jesus is welcomed, then the one who sent him is welcomed. And the reward Jesus tells them will indeed be great.
Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join me this morning in a moment of quiet reflection and of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, in those quiet moments, help us to discover within ourselves the grace and courage to be again your envoys in the world. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. And our hymn is, The Church is Wherever God's People Are Praising, number BU 579. Friends, this morning as we share our offerings in the ways that are available, we lift up these gifts in gratitude to our gracious God, and we offer ourselves again in service. If you're interested, the National Office of the United Church is accepting donations to help our partners in the Global South through this pandemic, through the ACT, or ACT, Alliance. If you go to the website of the United Church of Canada and follow from the social action link to the Act Now link, you can find three ways in which to donate to this ministry and mission of helping our partners in the Global South during this global pandemic. And this morning, we receive and accept greetings from our, uh, church, our fellow church in San Salvador and Pastor Thomas Castro this morning. Dear brothers and sisters in Emmanuel United Church in Ottawa, Please receive our greetings on behalf of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in El Salvador. Uh, we appreciate pretty much your greetings that we received through your minister, Brother Brian Copeland. Thank you so much. And in this service today, we um, share these greetings with the uh, congregation in our, in our service. Emmanuel is pretty much concerned about what's going on here in the country. We've been affected by the epidemic as well, due in Canada, as well around the world. But in the situation of this epidemic, the poor communities have been affected a lot. They work in the agricultural, they work in the market, some of them selling things in the streets, and they are not working. They have no income, and, they, and here is the problem, facing a calamity in their homes. Emmanuel is uh, distributing food um, twice, and it's a, a third room, room around the uh, of distribution. Um, and we are distributing food as well in the area of our neighborhood, in Soyapango communities as well. And for tomorrow, we plan planning to visit communities in Suchitoto uh, as well. On Wednesday, we are planning to visit communities in Usulutan. Many of you know Usulutan, you've been working, building homes in Alegria, 
Mercedes Umaña, Los Cruces, Las Crucitas, uh, Río Los Bueyes, Guayinac, all those communities, we're going to, to bring some help with food and cloth. The affectation of the, uh, from the Amanda storm caused a lot of destruction in the country. Uh, many people were killed. Many people were disappeared. More than 30,000 houses totally destroyed. Road being destroyed. And we are planning for uh, in the future, in the, in, the, in the next immediate future, to work in two things. One, food security. Help the people to produce some um, cereals, some fruit, some uh, vegetable, and as well some uh, chicken, hens, uh, ducks, uh, pigs, for them to, to, to have food and to sell some of those. And the second one is to help them to restore, to rebuild their homes. Uh, many families suffer destruction of some homes. What we are planning is to visit and accompany them. We want to ask you, please, continue praying for us. We need your prayers because we need the blessing of God. As well, we are keeping you in our prayers. And we wish you that the mercy and grace of God be with you all. Hope to see you soon. Good morning. My name is Reverend Jenny Leslie. And I invite you into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this good day, for all the new blessings that it holds. We give thanks for all of the new life we see in the flowers, in the vegetables, in the fruits of our gardens. We give thanks for the trees and the birds of the air and all the great things that you bestow on your great creation. We give thanks for your mercy and your love, for your grace and for your wisdom that imbues us and all creation. Oh God, there are many places and many people that we would pray for this morning. We pray for all those who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color. All those who face oppression, hate, and racism. Help all of us, O oh God, who wish to do your will, to go deeper into your grace, to go deeper into your wisdom. O oh, loving God, we pray for all those who face the coronavirus, for all those who are in pain and who are suffering, for all those who, whose families mourn the loss of loved ones. And we pray also for all those who fear the virus. May there be peace and healing in your world, O oh loving God. We pray for all those who are homeless at this time, those who are hungry, all those who are in hospital, all those who are sick of body, mind, or spirit. And we think also of all the people and places where there is violence and war and suffering. And we offer to you all the prayers of our hearts and our minds now.
O oh, loving and gracious God, we know that you hear our prayers and you work with us as co-creators of your mission in the world. Help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Help us to love who he loved, the marginalized, the homeless, the imprisoned, the downtrodden, the outcast. May we be his hands and feet in this world, doing his work. For we know that you love us unconditionally. You call us beloved at every turn. And your love flows through us into and onto all those people and places that we've prayed for. And so as we go out into this good day, help us to be ever mindful of your presence in our world through your spirit. Help us to know that you give us wisdom and grace at all times and help us to go deeper into your grace. We pray this in the strong and tender name of Jesus as Baby chicks turn to a mother when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And friends, we go forth to serve God faithfully in the world. Our concluding hymn is Day is Done, number 433 in Voices United. Please join Teresa and Nancy. So let us go forth. Let us go forth to be a welcome and a blessing to all that we meet. Let us go forth with the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>